took a quick look around the outside of Fuggles' residence and found that the walls were made from concrete with tiny stones pushed into it and was forever deteriorating. The garden was unsurprisingly unkempt and chaotic. It contained the usual items one would find in an abandoned garden, an old rusty lawnmower, deflated footballs, which probably didn't belong to her, an old bike that too was rusted, a shoe, a roll of carpet, a dead cat, a coffin lid, and a shopping bag. I considered the purpose of some of these items, but thought better of it and resumed towards the pink front door. Ding dong, said the doorbell. I waited. My facial expression was expressionless. Nothing. Ding. Dong. I held my finger down on the button longer this time. My lips lengthened along my face sarcastically. I started to smash the doorbell rapidly like a steam picked trollop on the back alley pub date, but there was no answer, which I found exasperating, so I continued harder and faster with raised eyebrows. Perhaps she was the one who had died. The door opened just as I had started another ding, and Mrs. Fuggle locked eyes onto me, then on my finger, which was still firmly pressed on the doorbell, then back at me, with her eyes peering over her glasses. I strained a smile at her, but she didn't smile back, so I quickly stopped smiling and released my finger from the button, which concluded the remaining dong. She turned away from me and rolled her eyes in unison, and I took that as a sign to follow her indoors. She zimmer framed her way back into the bungalow, and I trailed behind her with single steps and intervals between each, accompanied by my own eye-rolling and frowning, all while thinking about the conceivability of someone being as slow as she and still being alive. She showed me the way to the sitting room, as she slowly pivoted where she stood. I hollowly asked her if she wanted me to remove the dead cat that I saw earlier, and she responded in confusion and aggression that she didn't know what I was talking about. This made me angry, so I repeated myself, and she began to question what I was talking about while making some reference to Satan and calling me boy. I followed her decomposing finger to the left of the sitting room where I saw a cat's body hanging out of the sofa cushion and realised Mrs. Fuggle was likely unaware of the other cat corroding in the garden. I agreed with her and decided not to ask any further questions of how either cat met their recent demise. She asked me to be careful while pulling the cat from between the two sofa cushions and explained to me that Fido was very dear to her. I frowned at this comment as I flocked the very obviously a cat, Fido, onto my left shoulder while sighing at its unreasonable title. I carried its fluffy carcass through the hall and to the front door, rolling my eyes along the way. She called after me and asked me to wait, so I turned around with my head tilted back lethargically and glanced at her, disinterested with the weight on one leg. She wanted to say goodbye, and I could see her eyes filling up with tears and glisten as she looked at me. This made me feel uncomfortable, but I agreed and told her to hurry as I had other things to do today, which we both knew was a lie and deemed inappropriate, so she stabbed me in the face with a glare so powerful I had no choice but to back down. With the cat still limp and drooping over the front of my shoulder, I gave them both a moment. She cradled Fido's floppy head in her hands and began whispering something inconceivable into his ear, which made me feel much more uncomfortable than aforementioned, so I stretched my neck awkwardly away from them both while looking around the hallway to distract myself and pretend that it wasn't bothering me. I looked back to see if she had finished when I heard her say, Good night, sweet prince, and kiss the cat on the head before attempting to close his eyes with her fingers. Unfortunately for Fido, Mrs. Fuggle wasn't particularly accurate with her wrinkly digits and proceeded to poke him in the eyes with her nails, which made me flinch. She looked at me woefully and broken-hearted, and I stared back, perplexed by what I had just witnessed. I told Mrs. Fuggle that I'd bury Fido now, and she told me that it didn't matter what I did with him, as it was only a cat, and she retreated back to her sitting room, presumably to sit down and continue being old. I shook my head slightly and frowned, mouth slightly agape, and tried to make sense of the event prior, then submitted my sanity and comprehension towards it, 